Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the types of decay, and then we're going to move on to look at how we know what kind of decay a particular atom or nucleus is going to undergo. Okay, so let's first of all talk about alpha decay. So we often, you might often see it with the Greek symbol for alpha, which I've just drawn there on the, on the right hand side. And so alpha decay happens to very heavy nuclei. And to be a bit more specific, it happens to nuclei that have approximately 82 protons or more. So that's basically how we define what a heavy nucleus is, if it has 82 protons or more. And then it'll have a corresponding or bigger number of neutrons, which is what makes it such a heavy nucleus. Okay, And one thing I want to address about alpha decay is, in, I've seen in some of the revision guides, it says there's a neutrino, or a, sorry, an electron neutrino also emitted, and I just want to draw to your attention that that is completely wrong. Neutrinos are not emitted, and obviously if you apply your laws of lepton number conservation you would know that, but it was creating a bit of confusion, so I thought I would just draw you that to your attention. I forget which revision guides I've seen it in, but I've seen it in a couple, and apparently it's just a typing area. They, it was, they didn't mean to put that in. Okay. So an example of an alpha decay is we've got uranium-238 on the left-hand side. And when we're dealing with these equations, quite often in an exam paper they'll give you one of these with blanks in it so they won't have, say, this 234 or the 2 on here on the bottom line. So all you have to know is that the top lines on each side should be the same. So we've got 238 on the left-hand side and then we've got 234 plus 4 gives you 238 on the right-hand side and the same for the numbers on the bottom. So when, if you're ever asked to do one of these or complete the blanks, it's just a case of some basic adding going on. Okay, so that's alpha decay, and that sort of tends to be used in applications like smoke alarms use alpha decay because it's, it's really, it's, um, it's lack of ability to go through barriers is useful because what you have in your smoke alarm is a small air gap between two out between two contacts. So you have your alpha source on one side and you have a detector on the other measuring whether the alpha source is reaching it. So in normal air it's just about able to reach it but if smoke goes between those two gaps then it's blocked which then it sets off the alarm. So which is that's why if you spray things like deodorant cans and stuff at smoke alarms they get in the way of it instead and set it off as if it was smoke as well. Okay so let's move on to the next type of decay. So the next type we have is beta plus decay, which is sometimes given, obviously, the Greek letter beta with a plus next to it. And this occurs in nuclei which have too many protons, or what we describe as proton-rich nuclei. So other key things, you emit a neutrino in beta plus, and you emit a high-energy positron. So it's not just saying we're emitting a positron, we're emitting a high-energy one. So an example of a beta plus decay equation is here on the bin below. So we start off with a proton and it's been converted into a neutrino, a neutrino which is on the far right hand side, a neutron which is on the left of that and then in the middle we've got our positron which we're representing here in this format here. So basically we're saying it has the equivalent of, uh, of plus one atomic number. So you might often see it written like this here. Those two things are saying exactly the same thing. And we'll come on to how we represent an electron on the next one where we look at beta minus decay. So typically this is used in PET scanners because that the P in that stands for uh, positron. So these are used for scanning for all sorts of things in medical uses. I mean, one of the things it's used for is scanning for cancerous cells because those show up quite nicely under PET. Yep. So let's move on to beta minus. Again we've got this beta symbol obviously with a minus this time. This occurs in nuclei with lots of neutrons in them so we describe them as neutron rich. An anti-neutrino is emitted this time and you'll see down here that uses the symbol with a V with the bar over the top of it to show it's an antiparticle. And the electron this time is emitted, it, it's high, just like before with the positron, it's high energy. So it's not just an electron, it's a high energy electron, and that's 
sort of a key thing you need to get across. So we start off with a neutron on the left-hand side that turns into a proton and uh, anti-neutrino. And this here, just like before, is the representation of an electron. So we put a minus one in for its atomic number instead of plus one like we did for the positron. So typical uses for this. Uh, beta minus decay is typically used for measuring thickness of objects. So if in a, like a paper factory or something, it's used to measure the thickness of paper to main maintain its quality and consistency of, in a packet. So let's move on to the last type. So we have uh, radiation, which is given two different symbols typically. Both of those actually are the gamma symbol. You just might see either, so it's useful to know both. And this occurs when an atom is in an excited state, which you'll have learnt about at AS. So it's in a state where it has more energy than it typically would. And to try and get rid of that energy, the gamma, the gamma radiation can be emitted from it. And that's what's happening in lots of stars, which is where the gamma radiation in the universe is coming from. So this typically occurs after alpha or beta decay. So it, often, if you have one type of those, you will, it will then come with gamma radiation as well, as those decays lead to the atoms becoming being in an excited state. It can also occur after electron capture, because again, in that process, the products you form are in excited state, and the gamma radiation is a way of getting rid of that excess energy. So gamma radiation obviously is the giving off of photons, which we regard as having zero mass and obviously zero charge as well. So a really neat way of representing these things and actually finding out what kind of decay they undergo is what's called an NZ graph. And we've got one here. So on the y-axis you put the number of neutrons and on the x-axis obviously you put your number of protons on there. So you can see in this one we've marked where you get beta minus emitters. So um, just above the stable isotope line, which is here in black, and you get your beta plus emitters just below your stable isotope line, and it corresponds with the definitions we had. Obviously, beta minus emitters were ones so where we had an excess of neutrons, so it's above the stability line, and the beta plus emitters were the ones where we had an excess of protons, so it's just below the stability line. And the one that's not marked in here is obviously your alpha decay. So let's put that in now. The stability line for this isn't actually important. What's important is that we have this uh, z equals 82 line here. So you get alpha decay in this section over here to the right of this dotted line where your z is bigger than 82. And we often refer to this as an nz diagram because you can see on this, we've got this straight line here where your n is equal to z because we've got n and z both plotted on here. So that's what we call it. And it's really useful for finding out if you're using a particular material, whether it's going to undergo a certain type of decay or not.